Hello, this is Hayden from Ill Truth, and today we're going to be doing a little run through of the melodic elements, uh, a bit about the structure and the arrangement on our track A New World, which is out now on Sofa Sound Bristol. Um, the track itself came together over actually quite a long time. Um, I think the final version of this track was probably about the fourth or fifth version uh, of the main structure and arrangement and more of the creative outlines that we came to. We knew we wanted to create something uh, for the B-side of Secrets, um, something that was a little bit different, a bit more atmospheric, kind of cinematic, maybe something that's a bit more melodic, uh, heavy, or has more melodic content or phrases than uh, the A-side, which is more of your typical you know, sort of drum and bass club tune. Um, so we came to construct a new world. And um, I guess the basis of the track itself is something a bit more, like I said before, cinematic, a little bit more uh, almost kind of an orchestral feel with the space, um, lots of depth uh, within the synth work and... Uh, just something that's a, kind of a bit different, really, from um, our typical kind of ill truth stamp that people know us for these days. So uh, I'm going to play the final mix of the track, and then I'm going to go and break down the rest of the creative arrangement structural stuff in this project. <laughs> That's the kind of bulk of the track. Um, as I said before, it's more a um, melodic or more of a motif focused track uh, when we were making this. It was more focused around the intro than actually starting with the drop and working backwards. Uh, this was constructed purely from the MIDI and layering synths, uh, working with Serum 
um, just layering and layering and layering, working different synth patterns to actually complete each kind of phrase and motif rather than having one synth playing the whole melody, um, decided to split it up, which I'm going to run through now. One thing to take note of is this is the creative project and the more of the arrangement project, as it were. Um, as there are two of us, in the truth, we work quite um, different to most, where a lot of our tracks will go through this similar pro uh, process of an arrangement session or uh, we'll have a project with just the creative and arrangement um, parts fleshed out and then we will stem all the parts out and create a new project to fully mix the track down. This also gives a bit more freedom for working on edits, um, looking into detail on the drum hits, sub tails, and being able to make sure that things like phase alignment and um, just the overall cleanness of the mix is there. Um, one benefit of us doing this as well is that we don't have messy automation lanes. You know, there's no um, kind of huge chains of plugins going on. Um, there's no bus chains. It's just, here's what you had. You can't go back on anything else. All you can do is improve on what you've got. So that's how we work most of the time. Obviously, there are exceptions to the rule, but it's just worth noting for this project in case you're wondering why this project doesn't sound as tight as the final mix and master. So we're not going to run through the drums. As I said, this is mainly going to be around the motif and the creative session. Um, and the drum bus in this instance was taking up so much CPU that I needed to flatten them all so that we could smoothly run through this. But you can hear the drums uh, from the drop, get an idea of the groove. You've got your kind of typical um, tech step, staggered um, kick snare groove. Some live hits taken from Addictive Drums, a couple of hits layered with more uh, synthetic sounds, some open uh open cymbals, open hi-hats. Typically when we're working with especially cymbals, we like to keep things quite live um, as it kind of adds to our aesthetic, more live, more funk orientated um, drum work. But as I said, we're not going to focus too much on this. We're going to focus on the melodic stuff mainly today, um, working with the melodies involved. So I'm just going to start from the top of this melodic bus and work our way down through here. So as you can see, we've got the first distor uh, first drone here, which is called the main distortion drone. So this isn't anything crazy here. It's just a, a subby saw with a slightly modulated Monster One wavetable. And what's going on here is we've got LFO One triggering the movement between the wavetable across all of these shapes here and instances of the wave. Uh, we've just smoothed the wave out so that there's no jitters in between and so that you can see the free form movement is uh, a lot more, well, it's smoother. There's no jitters in between that. We've done the same thing with the bubbly saw here, but it's more on the pulse width modulation where that movement's happening. And again, we've just got some pretty basic filter movement and resonance movement here as well. Um, LFO, it's on a four bar, quite elongated, long uh, LFO shape, uh, LFO rate, sorry. You can see here, we've got a little bit of distortion, a bit of reverb, some chorus, and a touch of EQ just backing off the lows. Um, I'm guessing that was because when this was going through Serum, the distortion 
um, was getting a bit too much. So in order to control that a little bit more, gain a bit more headroom out of serum, ducking the EQ on the lows. The second pad here is just a layer for this, as I wasn't too keen on the low end in this pad itself, if you can hear without the CQ. The lower parts of it were okay, but I kind of wanted something a little bit deeper on this side. So we've gone for more of a really basic kind of uh, saw um, tone with this one, just to give it a bit of depth when you layer them together. That's what you got. Uh, the focus today, like I said, it's not going to be too much on the technical instances of Serum. We're mainly going to be focusing on the motif end of this track. This next section is where the more prominent parts of the drop come in um, with this two note phrase here. And you can hear now again with this we've got <laughs> two saws the bend uh, modulation on here is being controlled by LFO2 um, so I'm quite a slow rate but it's not um, we're not reinventing the wheel here. The filter movement is doing most of this work. And you can see the movement here. We've got this kind of almost like a ramp down to ramp up um, shape. But the edges have almost been smoothed out. And we've used the smooth function here on the LFO to really uh, to stop that uh, popping every time the oscillation restarts. There's a bit of a notch filter going on here um, on a 1.5 rate. On the Ableton filter, if we take this off on the right, you can hear. It's cool, but it kind of sounds a little bit static. So incorporating some really subtle movement on here and uh, a bit of phase movement from the start point of the filter. I was able to just keep it a bit more interesting as like I said this is a drawn out synth phrase and that slow movement over a long period of time makes such a big difference to especially something like this is quite harmonically rich. Um, it's got this kind of electric shimmery kind of chorusy feel in the end and uh it just helps it cut through i feel the next part here i believe this is a random yeah we've got some random computer kind of almost nintendo <laughs> sounding uh parts this is one of those patches that was just super random. Um, a lot of trial and error. I probably, uh, you could break it down here in the parts, but this was mainly used as more of an effects um, part than anything, to be honest, to work in those gaps of the melodies and almost act kind of like dub siren-esque effects, but without the siren element is just more let's randomize uh some parameters see what we come up with and uh if you hear all these parts together
So we're going to move on to this final kind of section uh, of the synth work, which is high high pad, kind of high string um, section. The purpose of this is to really add that tension before the drop. We've worked on, I think similar, yeah, it's the same keys as the first three note motif on the pad. You can just hear filter coming up here. And we're really drawing out that high frequency content just for the drop. And as it comes to an end, we've still got a bit bleeding over the drop without it coming to a complete silence. One thing that we have done at the end here is automated the delay on replica, which I believe is quite a filtered delay, quite a lot of resonance um, or feedback. Yeah, we've got a lot of feedback going on here. So it's kind of more of your dub echo, dub delay, uh, delay here. But we've got this coming in on the send right up to zero, just as it's peaking out before the drop. Uh, if you hear this in context with the bass, and I'll just mute the, jump, the drums a second so you can uh, get an idea of what this does. You're creating a new world. You can hear that atmosphere is really carried in. One reason for this is that the peak of this drop is actually at uh, 64 rather than 48. So although it's technically the drop, it's almost used as more of a kind of pre-drop or um, progression uh, section, really. The main pinnacle and the kind of height of the energy and the bass and of the movement, the pace of the drums, all comes in in this 16 here. And uh, we just thought, why not? It's quite nice to draw out a little high string here and there rather than just having all the melodic elements cut out and then you go strip back, um, you know, typical uh, heavy drums, heavy bass, less atmosphere and less bass on that bit. So we've got that here. Um, you've heard this all together. Now we've got some layers here that... Uh, have been layered with this ramp up uh, synth patch we went through here. So what I have done on this is got a synth patch and I cannot remember where I made it. I think it was in Reactor. Um, and what I've done is bounced single notes out of this. So I've taken the G sharp and the G and I would have stripped them out, probably something like this, muted the G, um, sorry, muted the G sharp, muted the G, or the other way around, and would have done something like this, where you've got the note playing on its own, and then I would have bounced that, as you can see, into audio. So we've got the G sharp and we've got the G now the reason I've done this is so that I can pan these independently and like I said earlier this was almost an experiment in creating more of a cinematic dance floor track in our kind of typical minor key moody style um now the cinematic element in this really comes into play just with the panning it's something it's super simple but having the notes split and rather than everything hitting in the middle or super wide having these notes play off each other but single singularly singularly 
Yes, that is a word. Singly. <laughs> on their own. Uh, on the G sharp on the left and the G on the right. It has a completely different dynamic to the synth work where everything is kind of in the similar um, space left to right. It's something that's quite subtle, but I think it carries uh, quite a lot of weight, especially in the final version when we did the mix. Um, it really uh, just enhances that cinematic vibe at the end. And as a run through, that's pretty much it for the melodics. There's nothing on this channel either on the group. Thought just keep it quite raw. Don't necessarily want to over process all the synth sounds, I like the depth the weight between uh, the pads and the drones and all the lead sounds for, were quite nice. Just leave it as dynamic as possible. So I've got a couple of bass sounds here that actually play off into these melodics as well. Um, if we can find them, we've got this turnaround synth here, which Starts at the 32nd bar. Ignore the uh, CPU peeking out. Um, you get the gist of the the part. But this part here, we've got a really pitch orientated uh, synth sound, which <laughs> is really kind of offsetting the key almost. But when you've got everything laid together, and you can hear this in the final version when we draw the build up just before the drop. And as you're building to these more uplifting parts, you hear that motif coming back in. really controls the mood and the uh, tone of the track. So as far as we go with the elements independently, the track's actually quite simple. There's not, uh, you know, 10 layers to each sound. There's not really a lot of processing going on as well. We've got this sound super raw at this stage, it's just an EQ cutting lows. And even now, I probably wouldn't even use the Ableton EQ. It'd, it'd all be FabFilter Pro Q3. But you can see there's not a whole load of stuff going on. It's all fairly stock plugins and a touch of EQ. And I think with especially this sort of drum and bass, the key is really, for us anyway, on utilising a simple idea to the fullest and taking, in this instance, it's a three-note phrase. You know, we're not breaking any rules with composing, um, songwriting. It's a three-note phrase. But by splitting this three-note phrase into these different parts, and you've got it through the pad here. And then as the pad dips out, you've got the 
are the synth and the sub notes then playing this three note phrase where the pad drops out. As you move forward, you've got the same notes, but adjusted slightly for the more uh, turnaround synth sound. And then when you move forward in the track, you can see the sub is still doing the same thing. You've just got a few slight alterations on the note bends and note changes. And that's about it, really. It's not a crazy tune. We typically write tunes that are a lot more complex than this in terms of the layers and processing. The drum channel, I think, before it was flattened, had about 10 channels. It wasn't anything... Um, excessive the core of this whole track was the space the depth how cinematic can we get this how can we adjust our typical style with more of a melodic focus and uh just give something for more of i guess like the 5 a.m dj sets rather than the uh you know the headline midnight set and uh yeah i think it was executed fairly well the only other layers really that we added for the cinematic elements were some effect sounds and uh these are layered almost more as hit points uh which you can hear properly if we mute these drums again We've declared war on time. Not a thinking, acting entity. A physical principle with which you can no more negotiate than you could with your own. So the effects again, it's nothing uh, super crazy, we're not reinventing the wheel here, uh, it's a few simple hit points and a couple of risers to help bridge those transition gaps between each section. Uh, and then the vocal, which ties in, as you can imagine this is where we got the track title from. We are creating a new world. And there we go. If anyone has any further questions, uh, wants to know anything more about uh, Ill Truth, wants to know a little bit more about our music, the music that we've released on Sofa Sound, uh, head over to uh, the Ill Truth SoundCloud page or go to Sofa Sound Bristol on SoundCloud or Spotify and uh, you go through the back catalogue, go through our back catalogue, go on our Instagram if you want to see some, uh, you know, some some videos, some funny some funny stuff maybe. Who knows? But we appreciate the time. Always a pleasure, never a chore. And uh anyone has any comments or anything like that they want to find out, drop a comment in the video and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. In the meantime, take care. Big ups. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace. <laughs>